Good day. So today we're going to be installing the uh, rear four inch lift kit on this fan. So these are the blocks that we're seeing in the uh, unboxing video. So I got a bunch of stuff set up here. So you're going to need a few different things to do this job. You need like a three ton jack. This one's meant for off road. You don't need to get one quite that big, but uh, having the lift extension there is pretty good if you want to grab onto the frame of the vehicle because you can reach past the uh, ground effects. You're going to need some uh, jack stands. You can see I've got some three and a half ton jack stands there. And these are some 12 ton jack stands. So the 12 tons start where the three and a half tons stop. So I'll decide which ones I'm going to use there. And then I got some steel plate for the, uh, just to put on the ground so these don't sink. These ones have tabs on them to make them a bit better outside or on the asphalt or where we were using them. The little guys there don't have the tabs welded to them. So I guess we'll take a, a look at the uh, ride height of this vehicle. So the best place to measure is from the center of the wheel to the fender arch. So on here, you can see we're a bit over 19 inches or just close to 20 inches. So I got this written down already, so we'll take a look at that. The height here, we have about uh, six inches of clearance uh, static. So that's a, one of the reasons why we're doing this lift kit is because you can't get over a speed bump barely with this uh, vehicle. Not sure if that's the lowest point or not. I think that sewer pipe in the center is uh, the lowest point. It might only have uh, four or five inches of clearance. Go to the back wheel. Here we're sitting closer to 22 inches to the center of the wheel. Check the clearance here. About eight inches on the outside fender. So even when you're trying to park these things, you can get up against curbs and scrape up the plastic. In fact, this vehicle has had all of the skirts repainted at some point in its life. And uh, when you back up against the curb, you can almost, uh, I've knocked off the uh, trailer wiring connector on this, in fact. That's another problem. So to do this job, you're going to need to have some uh, torque values. So I've got some stuff written down here. This came out of a Chilton manual. I'm going to provide a link in the description for that. You can ac access it for free if you make an account at that website. And then the front, we have some additional torque values for that. I'm trying to think what else we need special. I just have socket sets, 3 8 drive impact, half inch drive impact, just a conventional quarter, 3 8 and half inch regular sockets there, 3 quarter inch impact gun, a drill, quarter inch drive impact gun. One thing that the WeldTech kit doesn't address is the bump stops on this vehicle. So I've got some stainless 2x4 here. And that should be about the right height. So I'm contemplating extending the uh, bump stops with this material here. I'm going to try to reuse the um, existing rubber, or you could get universal rubber and bolt it on here as well, but things are not that readily available for me right now. So I'm just going to reuse what I've got. You need a grinder to cut this and cut a slot in it for the uh, bump stop and various uh, grinding wheels. I recommend the Diablo are good. There's industrial stuff that's better, but uh, Diablo is good enough. I wouldn't use anything cheaper than that. Got some uh, wrench sets. You need Loctite on various components. I can't remember if this is 262 or 272, whatever it is, just red Loctite. It's written in the manual to use 272. I've got some anti-seize here. I've got a digital inclinometer. I want to check the uh, various angles on the drive shaft to see where we end up because that's kind of important. I don't have any driveline problems now, so I just want to get the original angles recorded so that if uh, something happens I know what I need in the future. 
power bar. That's about it. And then obviously the uh, lift kit components. So I'm just going to stop filming this. I'm going to get the, the vehicle kind of set up so that I can uh, lift it in a good work area. And kind of close to the table here. So we'll carry on in a minute. All right, problem number one for the road check owners. I can't even get the jack under the vehicle. Can't get it past the uh, skirts in front of the rear wheels or under the generator to get to the uh, pumpkin. So I'm going to have to do a, a two-stage lift on this. got the wheels blocked up front because we have the rear wheels off the ground so we don't want this to roll away. in here so I can get onto the differential. This is going to go forward I think. Yeah. That's a bit of a hassle. So now You can see I got a generator there that was in the way of the uh, differential so now I can reach in there and grab onto the differential. Okay so I got the uh, vehicle up on jack stands now. I'm going to leave the jack under the uh, differential so we need to adjust that height from time to time as we're putting in the shocks and lifting blocks and we're going to have the axle disconnected on both sides so this is fairly well balanced I should be able to get a hold of that. So you can see I put the jack stands at the uh, rear spring shackles and it's pretty high. I think you'll need 12 ton jack stands to do this job. So just keep an eye out for them. I was able to just ask for a, a deal on them. when they, they weren't on sale so they gave me $30 off just for asking. So that can happen. Um, this vehicle has a Hellwig sway bar on it. You can see the video about that. That's going to be a problem when we're finishing up the job because I don't think the links are going to be the correct length. But uh, generally, I think we're pretty good. You could go up higher if you wanted. Putting on the wheels, I'll have to lift up the axle to get the extra four inches of height under the wheels. But that's not a big deal. So uh, I guess uh, get my earplugs out and I will uh, take the wheels off. All right, so let's take the wheels off here. So you should have a, uh, a wheel service socket to do this. This vehicle uses a 22 millimeter with the current configuration, which is not stock, obviously. So we'll see if we can get this off of here. They're on a bit tighter than I had expected. I tried to do this with the, an extension, and there wasn't a, enough torque to do it. If you're taking this off by hand, it would take quite a bit of time, and you'd want to loosen these before you lifted the vehicle off the ground. Alright, so this vehicle had the uh, brakes serviced recently, 
And you can see that uh, these are American racing wheels. This cap on here is not hub centric, so the wheel's not hub centric. So it's important that you, uh, when you're putting these back on, that you get the uh, studs and the nuts lined up in the wheels. So we'll take a look at that when we're putting it back together. So the reason we took the wheels off is really just to get access to the U-bolts here for the most part. I'm not sure what the back spacing is on that wheel. They're on a lot of road tracks for a lot of different years. So these are supposed to be long enough from talking to Jeremy Johnson there at Weld Tech. Don't need to worry about these brake lines, although I do intend to replace them with a stainless steel brake line. He did said, say that they relocate the uh, parking brake mounts somehow, so I have to figure that out. There's no instructions included with the uh, kit. I didn't really get into a deep conversation with him as to how to uh, do this, but it seems that there'll be a problem when you drop these down four inches. You should have uh, greased these U-bolts a couple days in advance of the job, so I'm gonna do that now. That is the uh, bump stop here. I don't think it has ever touched the axle. So you can imagine that if you do a four inch lift, how far that's going to be from the axle. So if you were in a real bad situation where you needed that, your vehicle will probably uh, roll before the bump stop did anything to help you. So uh, I'm gonna go through the effort to uh, extend that somehow. Hopefully in this video, perhaps in a, a supplement video. All right, so we're gonna take the uh, rear shock off here on this side, already got the other side off, and then take the uh, sway bar link off as well down here. So the Hellwig stuff is Imperial fasteners. They need to get on with metric like the rest of the world. And then the van is metric. So it's 21 millimeter here, 18 up over here. Then the top bolts are 13 millimeter. And then I had to use a swivel just to get the uh, tool in here, so always be careful with that. You don't want to be anywhere near it with your face. Axle is still supported by the jack. Probably just use a punch to push that through, if any. If I need to. That's good enough. Then reach in with a 13 millimeter. Try not to drop the shock on your head. Out of the bolt. So we'll take a look at that side by side with the replacement shock. Now I'm just going to get the uh, sway bar link off here. So it's 11 16 on one side, 5 8 on the other. I don't know if that'll focus or not. We just kind of tidy things up here. Take a look at the uh, shocks after that. All right, so things are progressing. I got the uh, U-bolts off on one side, so we're gonna go on to the other side. This is probably the worst part of the job is getting those off. If it's an older vehicle, they might just snap off if you're lucky. This one's uh, not winter driven, so it's in pretty good shape. So that's got its own drawbacks. So anyway, I just put some oil on the threads. I'll have to go thread and re-thread them a few times before they come off. It's gonna be a bit time consuming. I'm not sure how much I'll show 
But I will say that you should kind of get them all loose first before you take any all the way off. And uh, you can get them loose with the power bar, it's just more time consuming. And in fact, this uh, wrench here doesn't perform very well on U-bolts because uh, it needs tension for it to be able to put pressure on them. So uh, an impact, an air impact gun might be better for this job, but we'll uh, see how it goes here. Bear with me, I'll take a look at the uh, display here, trying to get it set up so we can see something. It's kind of a sunny day. I think we're probably in view. So these are 24 millimeter on the stock side things here. So I just kind of loosen them all up. Sometimes it helps if you put your hand on it. Unless of course it comes off. I had locking pin in, I'm surprised it did that. Yeah, this adapter is pretty much worn out. I'm gonna have to get another one. That shouldn't be coming off. So just get it started on all four of them, and then go back and forth. I still got a couple threads to go, so I just have to do this a few times. There's one. That's obviously going to get pretty hot. You can put oil on it as you're working it, but you'll get covered in oil, so it's up to you. So I'm just going to take the other three off here. Alright, so I got the U-bolts uh, off now. It's a pretty messy job, just completely filthy here, covered on the face too. So I'm just going to clean these off and paint them with some uh, roll bar and chassis black. Just to be kind of complete, I like to do that when I get suspension parts off. The uh, shocks ended up being very close to the same height. I don't have a stock shock. Like I'd say it's probably... Uh, inch and a half longer on the Fox shock side of things. So let's do that. See if I can do a little compression test on these or not. Again, just gotta get the camera lens up. Hopefully I didn't flip the video by doing that. It looks like I might have. All right. So that goes in all the way. There's no gator and they're upside down compared to these. So these go down quite far as well. They're slower to come out. Not as worn out as I thought they were. I'll have to do a, a ride report and see how I feel about these Fox shocks. They're certainly not as stiff as the Bilsteins from what I can tell. So anyway, I'll get those parts uh, clean and painted and then we'll uh, lower the axle down. All right, so just waiting for the hardware to uh, paint dry to dry. So just cleaning off the tops of the uh, leaf pack here. If you were doing the overload springs, you'd be taking off this uh, big one here on the bottom and putting two uh, upside down leaves on as far as I understand. So you'd be doing all the same thing. If you were replacing the uh, leaf packs all together, 
There is a procedure for setting up the uh, rear shackles, which are kind of hard to see because of the light. But you need to have them in the right position when you torque them down so that your van's not leaning to one direction or another. So that's in the uh, Chilton manual I'll reference. So that's pretty good. And then again, if you're taking the leaf pack apart, you'd have to take that nut off of there. So I guess uh, we'll just uh, lower down the axle now. And the way you put these uh, spacers in is that the uh, narrower part goes forwards and uh, this needs to fit into the bottom of the spring and that fits into the uh, axle. So hopefully these are the right diameter otherwise we'll have to do some adjusting. So I'm just uh, going to get the camera set up. And try to lower this down. So obviously you're going to want to have at least four inches of height that you can lower the axle down. Otherwise you're going to be in a bit of a predicament because you're going to have to block the axles and lift the vehicle up some more. And uh, that's not good. We might be in a bit of a predicament because I had uh, some weight on the spring still. Oh yeah, there's a lot of droop on these springs. Let's take a look at the other side to see where we're at. Hopefully we didn't pull a brake line off. When it rolled, now we're, yeah, we are pretty tight. All right, so I guess we'll be doing this one first. You just have to check for cleanliness. And I'm gonna have to make some decisions here. I never did do the driveline angle measurements. I didn't have a good way of getting under there and I actually kind of forgot to do it. So someone else will have to do that in another video. And uh, I need to get this axle basically quite a bit lower. Like full droop is past what these brake lines can do. So that was not really expected. So anyway, we'll uh, do some thinking and figure out what we're gonna do. All right, so I just put some bailing wire around the axle, adjusted things a bit. Ended up lifting the van up way higher to get more steps in that jack. So I'm not sure how high we are right now but the N is just showing as to where it's locked. So I am going to uh, lower this back down on the stands. Just have to bear with me as I check things. Make sure I grabbed it nice, which I have. Sway bars digging into the ground. There. So, this is what happens when you got bigger vehicles and you need bigger of everything bigger tools, more lift. For the brake lines, what I'm looking at doing is uh, disconnecting in here. On either side, there's a bolt that attaches a line to the frame. This line is kind of complicated in that it's got multiple connections on it. So I'll have to see if I can get that to come down a little bit. If I drill a hole in the top of that tab to get a couple more inches, that would be helpful on both sides. So I'll just uh, start working towards that. 
All right, so things are starting to get back under control now. So I decided the best thing at this point was to uh, get the springs on. So I did loosen the uh, brake lines. If you are a road check owner, there is a, uh, a propane line here that's going to be in the way. So I need to go in there and disconnect it and flip it around this uh, support. And then I should be uh, good to go after that. So let's get these U-bolts uh, on here. That way you can't drop the axle if you have uh, them in here. So they fit over the springs nice. They fit into the holes nice so they're the right type. They are a uh, fine pitch thread compared to the uh, originals, which were coarse. I don't know if you can see or not, but there's some slots on the uh, washer here, or on the nut. So I'm going to put that up. I think that's uh, the correct way of putting that. So once we get these on, then I'll worry about uh, getting the blocks in after that. This axle is pretty heavy. It's not something I can handle on my own. So I need to make sure I don't drop it. So this is a fair amount of work, but if you're careful, you can certainly do it in a day. And you can save yourself uh, quite a bit of money. I'm not sure what somebody would charge to uh, install this, but I'd say it's worth doing. All right, so I just have those just started slightly. So now I'm going to lower the axle again. Hopefully things behave nicely. I've got enough droop now that I can get those blocks in. Even rotating this axle is tricky. A little bit more. Just want to make sure I'm not ripping anything off here. The breather is okay. Parking brake is starting to get tight on this side. Brake line on the other side. That's pushing the limits there, hopefully. It'll really take, be helpful to have a second person to help twist the axle. Maybe a bar. So now I've got to lift it slowly so I can eventually get this hole to line up with this.
be a good day to invite your fellow van enthusiasts over so they can do this with you. Alright, you got this one. Gotta keep the ball on the bottom in. Alright, so I'm just gonna start to snug up those bolts on the bottom there. It's gonna be a bit of a process to get this to come up straight, then we'll move on to the next side. All right, for the road check owners, I got the uh, propane line relocated, so I just had to take out the self-tapping screw, disconnect that fitting. It was uh, 5 eighths to brace the T, and then 15 16 for the uh, acorn nut. I was able to get that off and finagle it around the brake line so that they are no longer tangled with each other. I'm gonna relocate this brake line down here so it's sort of nestled quite nicely but when I put the weight on this brake line it bent this uh, portion here over the uh, bleeder and the brake line is now rubbing on the uh, spring which is totally not acceptable so I'm going to bend that back but I don't think I'm going to have enough brake hose for uh, full droop so I'm going to need to get new brake lines made. I kind of wanted to do that anyway with uh, stainless braided brake lines. So I guess now is the time, but I wasn't really anticipating this. I could make some other, like a longer bracket to drop this down much further. That might be uh, another option because you could put a bracket from here down to here. But you got to be careful that the leaf springs don't hit this one it's up in the opposite direction. So there's that. So I'm just gonna do a pilot hole for the self-tapping screw and then put it in if I can find a bit. It doesn't want to self-tap into this material. There's a good spot to start this. Right there. It is worn out. <laughs> it doesn't want to go. I know that's not a hard material. Switch bits, see what else I can get to go. For a self-tapping screw, I just got this stainless screw here. A little bit loose in there. I need a big pile of hill. I have to admit this job has become a bit bigger than I had anticipated. It's not beyond my abilities, but I wasn't really prepared to do this much work today. I don't have uh, as many tools I would have liked. In fact, I don't even have a big enough uh, correct size bit to do the pilot hole. It's going to be too big. I also have to persevere and make this thing work. Alright, so you guys don't need to see that. So I'm just going to finish putting in this screw. I'll just get another one because this one's kind of rounded off. And uh, 
We'll figure out what I'm going to do on the other side. It's a little bit more complicated. All right, so on the driver's side, what I did was I took this uh, nut out here, pulled these uh, brake lines around. They were underneath of this bolt for this uh, bracket before. So I pulled that around. I pulled the water line up through the back and back on top of here as well. So I'm going to drill a hole the same as I did on the other side. And again, I bent the brake line down here so it had gone over the uh, bleeder. So I pulled it back a bit. And uh, obviously there's a concern that these will rub on the uh, leaf springs because they've got these uh, plastic conduits over them. So I'm going to have to look at that in more detail later. So I wouldn't say that this is complete. And then there's still the uh, bump stops I need to look at up here. And uh, that brake cable is kind of tight going across the other side. So we'll have to take a look at that. This is the breather. So it's just barely long enough. I might need to extend that too because I'm not at full droop right now. And you want to get everything set up so that it, nothing is taut at full droop. Especially if it's full droop on one side and the axle is twisted a little bit. So we'll have to go over that uh, later on as we progress with this install. So the uh, Fox shocks are now in on the back. And they're actually the uh, limitation for the full droop. So I don't need to worry quite as much about things as I thought. So right now, the axle is not being supported for the road check owners. I've already moved that generator back a few inches and the uh, exhaust is rubbing on the parking brake on the driver's side so that's something I need to work on. I tucked in the water line in with the brake line up here for road track owners again. Still need some zip ties here to make sure nothing gets into the uh, wheel area. This is a, uh, like I said, that fitting is a bit problematic. I want to put steel brake brake lines on here. I'm going to need to get a, uh, a T that takes these two line sets and then get a custom line because this is swaged onto here. It doesn't bolt onto that piece as far as I understand. That's right. So I'll need to get a new a line with a T that has a fitting here so I can clamp or screw this onto there. So that's something to do. Sway bar doesn't reach on full droop. I'm short a few inches. We'll look at that later as uh, I get the wheels on. These U-bolts aren't tight yet. They need to be tightened now and then tightened after 100 miles and then tightened regularly after that. You'll see that the block sits rearward a little bit on the uh, perch but I'm in the center hole all the way through so that is correct. So I'm happy with that. So uh, I guess I'll just lift up the axle, put on the wheels, do some uh, tightening here and uh, we'll take another look after that. Alright so I'm going to wrap up the uh, rear portion of the lift today here without having it 100% wrapped up. So basically where we left off last weekend was uh, putting the wheels on. I think the camera cut out, ran out of space or something. So I just want to show the uh, how to torque the wheels. So this is a uh, eight bolt wheel. So when you do it, it's 140 foot pounds, which is quite a bit. So I just took it for a drive and I'm doing a retorque now. You can see that I got a bit out of it. So you do across, then you do like a, an X pattern, so you go straight up. Then you start just kind of guessing at it, not guessing necessarily, but doing cross patterns again, straight across from each other. And this is kind of where I usually forget where I was at. So at that point I will do eight all the way around. I'll just count off eight to make sure I didn't miss any. 
Then the last part of the video here is the bump stops. The chances of ever needing them is slim, but I thought to be complete, I would make a pair. So what I did was I took a, some stainless two by four. This is about four inches wide, or long rather. And I cut a slot into it, three inches long and a half an inch wide. I just used a, a grinder to cut that slot and that slot. And I kind of cut on a diagonal and nicked it across. And I was able to bend the t two triangles and snap them off at these positions where I kind of nicked it because I couldn't cut straight through. And that worked out pretty good. I tried to cut it out with a chisel, but the material was uh, not behaving. I ended up tearing it. I did make a third one when I was practicing. So the last step here is I'm going to drill a hole here and a hole here and use some fasteners to reach up and bolt this up to the frame where the uh, bump stop would have been so it's facing down normally and that'll give me uh, an extension to match the uh, lift in the rear so it was a true four inch lift I went from uh, 21 inches from the center of the wheel to the fender to 25 inches the front, as you'll see in the other video, or maybe part of this video, ended up being uh, a six inch lift so far. I drove it, like I said, and then just doing my retorque right now. I got to retorque my uh, bolts for my leaf pack there as well. Probably can't see them. I got to retorque those. And keep an eye on them regularly. I'm going to end up uh, drilling the holes for these uh, brake hoses out a bit bigger and tapping them for the factory fasteners. I think that'll look a bit better, a little more professional. So I'm going to do that. That Everything on this band so far has been metric from the factory, so I'll do a, a metric thread to match whatever the original fasteners were. I think they're just sitting on the counter here, yeah. So get those uh, to go in there. It's working with the um, Hellwig sway bar, no problem there. Took it for a ride. I'll do a ride report separate from the actual work videos. And uh, I guess that is it. So uh, thank you for watching.